Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball. Game 7 Baseball. Dot com. Dot com. And as we can see there, there's a trophy there from the old Game 7 folks. Uh, uh, Mitch displaying them proudly in his uh, facility there. You're, you're working a lot, and we're going we're gonna to catch up with him in the next couple weeks. Uh, he's working his uh, patootie off, we'll call it that, right? <laughs> I was going to go with tail, but that works. <laughs> I don't know that I quite have a patootie. Um, <laughs> I haven't like, heard the term you know, patootie like in a long time. Yeah, it's like when you're in kindergarten, and that's the that's the terms that we use when we're when we're back there for for some kindergarten stuff. And so, um, we had a. Uh, hey, I just he just, just called me a kindergartner. <laughs> well, just now the, what we use when we <laughs> just the so vocabulary of a kindergartner. Hey, I'm just I'm I'm we're the same age. I think we're close to the same age. Um, uh, I, I, patootie is not thing. I was thinking my wide load. I was working my wide load <laughs> off. We were just traveling down and there's a bunch of double wide trailers down there and I'm seeing the flash of lights go off and I'm thinking wide loads. I'm like, that's me driving in the, in this picture frame right now. <laughs> I can hit oh, a baseball man. car. That's all that matters. That's <laughs> right, baby. We love it. And we're here yeah. today, uh, on the show to our right. Uh, welcoming in our guest, Mike Buddha from uh, Premier Baseball Academy. It was funny, Mitch. We were talking, so you're talking about remodeling. Last time we had uh, Mike on in the studio, it was all different. He walks in, he goes, oh, you guys, wow. Studios change. <laughs> so Studios been, change. Yeah, it's been a minute since he's been in. And uh, so we're happy to have you back, man. I appreciate it. I love being here. Absolutely. Talking baseball, as always, my buddy Mitch Thomas uh, joining us. We got our, pre- uh, excuse me, youth baseball talk. And it's always good to talk about youth baseball. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. Game7baseball.com. Go register your team. Finish up some fall. They got some good fall tournaments going on right now. Uh, weather's hanging out, right? It's some pretty nice weather, and I think it's going to be nice and cool again this weekend. Uh, supposed to drop those temps. It's like 90-something degrees outside right now, but I think the weekend's They've got four nice. more weekends at CNH Ballpark. Best place in town to watch a game and grab a beer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love the plug. There it is, baby. <laughs> I love CNH. and we, we We did uh, uh, two games. We broadcasted two games there, right? I think so. Yeah, I think it was. It was fun. It was great. I love uh, CNH as far as a venue. The people around you were talking. It was fun because you always had the parents close. I love this part. And they, mom comes up and goes, "You got his name wrong." <laughs> right. <laughs> I think a lot of people love CNH. I love CNH, but I have a different. I got married at CNH. Did you really? I got married. I got married on the pitcher's mound at CNH. So my wife is a true sport and. That's where we got married, had our reception and everything there. So, Oh, man. I Things you learn yeah. on YBM cast. Please, right. please tell me that you have a, a picture of you two going down that steel slide that's about 150 years old and probably got stuck halfway down. But please tell me that you went down it. We did not do a picture of that. I'm sorry. But we did get a picture on the well, bleachers. Well, that's good because <laughs> – if she had a white dress, it's probably now aluminum. It has aluminum all over it. She so. had a white cardinal oh, jersey. Good... She had so. a white cardinal no, jersey. She would have lost it there. We wore cardinal jerseys. So, and that slide cool. will probably be gone soon. So, is that right? Yeah, really? So we're uh, we're in talks to redo the playground. Uh, some want to get rid of it altogether. I'm I'm pushing to keep the playground. I think that's good because you know there's too many brothers and sisters out at the ballpark. Uh, that you know, mom wants to watch. She can go, let him go and play in the yeah. in the at the park. Well, before kids, I was like, yeah, do away with it. Let's put some more batting cages in there. Let's do this. Now that I have kids, I love the fact that <laughs> they have a playground, and uh, you know, it's enclosed. You don't have to worry about getting hit by balls. But yeah. uh, right now, it's it needs some it needs some work, and that's where that's where we're at with that. So that is a that is a curious thing though that you could use a couple more batting cages there. That's true. Yeah. But parking kind of landlocked. Parking. Kind of. <laughs> that's yeah. what that's what it's like here. You you know what it's like here, Mike, in the middle yes. of in the winter to park and it's like 
we we are searching for parking and it's like we can't get no approval so i understand landlocking oh my <laughs> lord that's it's a, it's a nightmare it's not too bad the biggest thing with cnh is everybody's trying to park away because nobody wants Lord to park up right. close to a foul ball, man. Shoot, I'll park close. I mean, hey, if my ball, if my car gets hit by a ball, so be it. That's part of being a baseball fan. <laughs> I've seen it too, man. Mercedes doesn't matter. Boom, yep. there's your window gone. It's like hitting a golf ball. Trees are ninety percent air. You know how many times I've seen a ball that you think is going to blast a car and then it doesn't. You know, so <laughs> I, I feel like there's just as many, or if not more, that miss the cars than actually hit them. So. You know, it's it's strange that you would, and I've seen the golf courses are right next to the the the, the street, and I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> you, you. Oh yeah, I I don't. Or the houses along the right side of the course; those yeah. are my enemy. <laughs> I don't oh. golf. <clears throat> I fish golf courses. There you go. Uh, I do. I can't. I can't hit a golf. I, I if I the only way I can hit a golf ball straight is if I open my stance up and then I hit it left. If I try to stay square, I I, I, I uh, slice it to no other. But now that I've learned how to dissociate my hips, uh, I, I'm a little better at the driving range. Um, I've learned a few things about hitting and the association with golf and hitting and and. Uh, it's funny growing up in the eighties, nineties, you know, it was like, if you were a baseball player, you couldn't golf. You were told not to golf. If you were a baseball guy, like it would ruin your hitting. And now we're, now we're incorporating things like golf hockey into baseball because of the mechanics of how it, you know, you know, to, 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 uh, get max effort out of your swing. And it's a lot to do with golf. It's a lot to do with hockey and, and even the path of tennis. And so, um, it's no more that, uh, you know, straight to the ball with a knob or straight down or, you know, that punch and Judy stuff of the eighties. Um, it is a lot, lot different. And well, I don't think pitchers didn't have to, to worry about not playing golf. <laughs> what was that? I said, us pitchers didn't have to worry about not playing golf. So <laughs> no, that's right, man. Out on the golf course. We'll see you next Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I get five days, four days well, rest. What is that? Between. Uh, that technology that has moved, it started in golf. What, you wear the apparatus everywhere. It's on that. Oh, I, I'm trying to remember what that's called. No, it's not the blast motion. The ve- yeah, I know what you're, I know what you're talking about. You. I can't think well, of it. Like, they, they, they have things like track man and all that stuff now. Well, but this is, this is an apparatus. These are sensors that you wear it goes on your hands on your elbow it's up here it's on your back it's all these things that register movement and it came it was designed for golf and then they took yeah. and created and brought it over into baseball uh we we saw it a couple of years ago when we were at the gamers they were using it yep. at their facility so i thought it was interesting and that goes to what you're talking about how much those influences have come into baseball from those things i think it's interesting absolutely training but let's get to our topic, folks. We, we've rambled on enough, right? Uh, hey, <laughs> I like rambling. You know, when I'm on the show, that's where we go. Hey, it's always fun, bro. <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to continue our conversation about club baseball. We're in the fall, fall baseball. How important do you think, you know, fall baseball is? Fall baseball is huge. Uh, now, of course, there's a lot of multi-sport athletes out there that are doing other things, but you know, even the guys that, that that can have the time to do some fall stuff. I mean, we took a step back this year with Premier, and we realized we didn't do much fundamental stuff in the fall. So we've done six weeks of fall uh, training, just positional work. You know, outfield, infield, pitching and catching. We don't haven't even picked up a bat yet besides games and maybe team practices. But we got back to the basics. We need to learn how to field a ground ball, field a fly ball, how to throw cutoffs, you know, all of that. So – We've, we've focused a lot of our fall work into getting more of those defensive reps and more of the fundamental work in. So I think, it's, I think fall is a huge time for that. It, it keeps uh, – it, I, I like the fact that it's the thought process to development rather than the competition, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we said let's, let's take a step back from competition and focus more on development, yeah. at least in the fall. You've got enough time in the spring and summer to, to compete. We need to get back to some of the fundamentals and, and work on that development. And that's what we missed out on, we thought, last year. And so that's why we made that change for this year. 
thoughts? Yeah, same thing. I mean, we we talked about it last week a little bit um, in what we've done in the past. Um, you know, we've let teams kind of do their own thing in the fall and never really managed uh, the, you know, development side of things. And, and what we're experiencing now uh, is it like, you know, last year for me, I had that 14U team that we didn't do anything in the fall. And when I got out there early on in the spring to start playing, uh, at 60, 90, they weren't prepared. And so it took us three or four weeks to get going. Um, and, you know, Coach Jamal just played this past weekend, and his team is is worried about that. You know, they, the, the 90 feet, the shortstop's a lot deeper. They have to make better throws. They have to be quicker. Um, all of those things that they haven't been prepared for. So we have to get out there on the dirt. We have to do the positional uh, training. Um, and that's what we're doing as well. I mean, we're going out there trying to create some skills and drills. We're not worried about cuts and relays necessarily um just yet we're trying to build fundamental footwork movement patterns um and just trying to get these guys the it, prepared for um change uh at least at the 14 u level at the 9 u level you know they're just starting out pitching and so you know we're we're uh using the fall to to help them guys uh learn to pitch off of a, a mound you know, I, so it, it, there's a lot of work. I, I'm a firm, I, I, I missed out on a lot of uh, years doing baseball in the fall. Uh, softball starts in the fall. And so it, it was always like as soon as summer was done, you went right into fall softball for three, four, five weeks and never stops because of how it works here. So I, I just um, it, it's. I did a disservice to my club last year, I felt. Uh, and so obviously this year we uh, we changed that up just like, uh, you know, PBA has done uh, with their uh, program as well. I think it's an interesting and as we are as we are going, we talk about development a lot here. And I think it's important because we talk about club baseball and it it just continues to grow. Um, <clears throat> I have a spreadsheet because I follow a lot of clubs throughout the state, not just here. And there's a lot of clubs in the state of Missouri. There's a lot of clubs in the metro area. And so to that end, and I ask this question, and I'm a, I have no problem with club baseball. This thing, I always remind, remind people, I think, I think club baseball has done some really good things. But do you think the growth has created some competitive holes? I think so. <clears throat> I mean, uh, to me, I mean, we've basically created uh, the transfer portal in club baseball. As soon as somebody is not point. happy, yeah. you know, or they want to <laughs> do something differently, they start their own, and there's no loyalty anymore. It's, it's um, you know, who's going to help my son right now and, um, you know, what's maybe the best opportunity, but it's there's no loyalty. They'll, there's so many options that as soon as something goes wrong or they're not happy with it, instead of fighting through a little bit of adversity – it's okay, where can I go next? And you see there's a lot of good baseball players out there that change clubs almost every year, you know. And it's unfortunate. I, I hate to see it, to be honest. Um, I, I never considered it that thought process. I like the way you put that. You know, it's, we've created a, a transfer portal that whenever something isn't going your way, oh, I'm just gone. That's interesting, Mitch. Oh, you, yeah. Look, just uh, having experience in coaching in the NCAA and then watching the changes, um, he, he's exactly correct. I mean, it's this has been going on in all levels for a while. You know, where where is the um, you know it used to take. Uh, if you were uh, a football player and you wanted to transfer out, right, it took you had to take a year off or you had to you had to go so far away from the university in order to play that year. Uh, baseball, softball, same thing, you know, other sports, basketball. Um, and and here we are, uh, th this this entitlement that I think that uh, we've allowed to happen in this sport has gone to the next that next level. I mean, um you know, professional baseball, we have to throw out. You're a paid athlete, and so you're going to want to leave to go get the most money you want. Now with the NLIs in, in sports, you're, you're going to see that same thing happen in college. That all I think has just been what we've started to do at nine and ten years old. When you're when little Johnny didn't get a chance to play, um, and Dad said he's my shortstop, or Mom said he's better than that. And I'm not just picking on the parents. It's it's what we do. I mean, we obviously want the best for our kids. I just don't think we have a realization of what our athletes really are. 
you know, um, I used to have a problem with clubs being inside of recreational baseball. And really, uh, now that's kind of changed for me um, because it's still recreational sports. But we need to identify that you're still just a recreational athlete. You're not putting in the time. You're not, uh, you know, I had this conversation with a coach last night that we have a very good athlete that, that trains here that flat out said that they don't want to do training anymore because it's tough. This is a very, very, very good athlete, a high school athlete, and wants to play college sports and has no idea how difficult it is. And and we're just catering to all these families just to keep numbers in, um, to keep numbers high. That's where I think we fail as clubs is we, we shouldn't we, – we, we should identify what – we are recreational single a double a triple a major and let everybody duke that out there's not a reason i need to call my club uh, a triple a team when we can we can't win a double a tournament it's just how i i, I feel about I'm, I'm with you i mean we're premier baseball academy but we don't have all premier teams um I, I know the level of teams that i've got and when we go to tournaments that's the level we play um, I think there's some false hope given from some clubs. Hey, we're going to play this AAA schedule. We're going to do this. Well, you want them to play at that level, but are they really that level? Mm-hmm. And I think that's that as a club director, um, as parents, we just got to be more realistic about some of these athletes and what their and, and maybe even what their end goals are. You know, the athlete you're talking about, it's it's too it's too hard. Well, yeah, he's a good athlete, but again, apparently he may want to play at the next level, but when he actually gets the opportunity to try to play at the next level, it's probably going to be too tough for him. Right. And and I think, you know, as we're talking about these things, I always like to temper these discussions when people say, you're just back. We're not banging on anything. No. These are these are real situations that are happening in this club. We talked with Dave Wiggins last week, recruits baseball down, said similar things. It's not – Everybody here is trying to be as honest as possible. I think parents need to be the same way. Again, it's I'll go back to this, and I want to continue to say this because I think it 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 really kind of started some of these things on the club side to a degree. Parents, uh, I love the transfer portal thing. That that was, I never even considered it like that, but it gave them a little bit more power. I'm just taking my kid and go. It's like I'm going to take my baseball and go home. Yep. You know. And uh, because it's not going my way. When are we as responsible adults going to have the conversation? This isn't banging on parents, clubs or anything. This is just we're talking about situations that we see happening within this deal. How are we going to solve these things? And we're going to get to that. I I always believe in solutions. and And there are solutions to things if we are willing to take them. Not all parents are the problem. Not all clubs are the problem. Not all one this, this. It's us together, working together to bring our athletes up to a place where they can succeed in life. We've created this culture. Yes. We've, we've got to I think so. Yeah. So we've done it to ourselves, and we've got to kind of change some things and get that culture back to what it used to be maybe or what it should be. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, I think most people that are doing this – it's they're doing it for the the athlete yes. and they're doing it for the right reasons. I agree. And I think ultimately deep down inside some of that is getting lost even though that it's still in there for all these all myself and and a lot of other people involved in youth baseball, youth sports in general. They're involved because of the right reasons, but sometimes that's falling to the bottom a little bit and we just need to pull that back to the top. And I want to say this real quick. I, I think that Let me do this real quick. I Dave. think we missed hold okay. your hold your thought. I, and again, this goes to, I talk to a lot of people all the time because this is what we do with Youth Baseball Midwest. I talk to coaches. There's a lot of good guys out there working to, because they do this. It's how they make their living. Mm-hmm. It's how they get paid. Oh, you're just doing it for the money. Well, yeah, my, my kids got to eat too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, that that stop those things. If you don't feel like you should pay this amount of money to have your child trained, then don't do it. That's Mm -hmm. your decision. Mm -hmm. Be responsible to that. Let's take that out of the equation. There's always going to be people that will try to take advantage. That's in any business. Yes. Not just youth sports or anything like that or whatnot. So let's, let's let's take a step back and look at how we, as you said, 
redo the culture, do, re, reset the culture a little mm -hmm. bit, right? Yep. Go ahead, Mitch. I, I, you know, for me, and I'll say this, I've probably said it a numerous times on, on the on the show is uh, I think adults have ruined it. Like Mike was talking about, it's every every single facet of youth sports. It, it has to do with the adults. You cannot tell me that a 10 year old is walking out on the field and saying, I don't like playing with little Tommy because he's terrible. <laughs> right. That, that's a car ride home that's ha happening. And that's a that's a parent that is comparing instead of trying to compete together. And um, we, we have to we we have to be better as adults uh, to make sure that uh, tournaments are ran the way they need to be ran. The uh, you know, the direction from the leaders are, are honest and we're not trying to sell a product because, of course, if I'm selling a product and I don't meet that that um service what do you think is going to happen it's the same thing that i do if i go to a, a restaurant and i have hair in my food you know i'm going to be i'm going to be having that conversation or if i go to the bathroom and there's the the, the toilet is is nasty you know i'm not going to eat there because that's what the kitchen looks like and if we're selling a product on the big picture and then we don't deliver of course parents are going to leave so then it just this this steady decline of you know it's somebody else's fault just going to continue to happen you know, and we, we just had, I'm, I'm passionate about this one too. As adults, we just have to be better. We have to be honest. If we lose a player, we lose a family. It was probably for the better. Um, and, and we just find the fits that work for your mold. And I will tell every single parent when they come to me, I am very hard, uh, on kids. I want, and I, I, they have to respect the game. They have to love the game. If they're not going to work at home, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, to, uh, train them. I, I, so, you know, for me, it's honesty, just be honest with our kids, stop ruining it for 10 year olds. And, uh, let's just let them kids like Mike said earlier, face adversity and have a little bit of fun playing a sport that we love so much. I agree. I mean, and you you said it. I mean, the ten year old's not making that decision. It's it starts with the parents and what they're hearing uh, from from the adults, uh, and that kind of what, what leads it into. It. But you're right. I mean, every club should know what fits their mold, um, and there's a place for everyone. Not maybe not everyone, but for most, there's yeah. there's a place for them. And, and when I coached at the college level, one of my recruiting pitches, I always told a guy, it's it's your decision to decide where you want to go. But I will tell you this: go where you are wanted. Um, because ultimately, yeah, you may want that school, but do they want you as much as you want them? And that's where you need to find. You find a place that wants you as much as you want them. Yeah. And I think you can do that at the club level too. I got this. Yeah, because you're talking about numbers. Sorry. You're, you're no, talking like you go to an NAIA school and you have JV teams. Mm -hmm. All you are is a number. Yes. And, and so you're like, you, you know, that's why you go to an NAIA school and 70% of it's student athletes. You know, it's yeah. because half of them don't even touch the field. And so, you know, it, it, it is, um, yeah, I could go. That's another topic. But <laughs> yeah, well, I, because, this, well, is, this is absolutely it. Let's, let's look at this. I had Justin look this uh, stat up. Okay, so we're talking about clubs. We're talking about, and we've had this discussion on numerous occasions. You can go and watch this old one. It's still up on the channel. Still one of our highest, highest viewed uh, shows that we've done. What makes a double A, uh, single A, double A, triple A major player? And this is something I think that is indistinguishable in our current culture. We don't talk about this enough. And I had Justin look this up. Um, we talk about Power Five. We talk about Division One. Yeah, Ugh, Division One. The majority of schools in the state of Missouri, college schools that play baseball, are Division II and NAIA and Division Three. That's the majority. Well, we just added, what, our fourth Division One baseball school in the state? Fourth. We had three. We had three. Now we have four. And you're talking Missouri. I mean, you got St. Louis, Kansas City, Springfield. you got a lot of big areas for baseball, and there's four Division One schools. And most of the kids, and that's another stat, most kids stay within 200 miles of their home. And so when you're looking at that, how many Division One schools are within 200 miles of St. Louis? There's probably a handful. Now, if you're going out on the East Coast or West Coast, that number triples probably. I went to school in North Carolina and never realized how many Division One schools are in such a small area. 
Right. You know, and it's crazy. I mean, in Missouri, there's four. That's it. And we just added the fourth. <laughs> and that, yeah, that just happened this year. Yes. Right. And I think, and when you talk, we talked about this, 1% of all baseball players in the United States play at the Division One level. Let that soak in. 1%. And that's not Power Five. That's Division One. period. And how many of those guys are getting a good scholarship? 11.7 scholarships given to 30 athletes on a baseball team, a Division One baseball team. We have to, I think, rethink the culture and, as you said, and how we're developing players and what we're talking about in these respects. Uh, we're going to be talking with Kevin Mulder this week about Division Two schools, and, and hopefully I want to talk to you a little bit. We're hoping to get uh, Scott Ewell, who just took, took over at UMSL, hoping to get him on the show we uh and and talk a little bit i'm hoping to get some of these other coaches around to talk about these things because people forget how good division two baseball is in this nation division two baseball is hard i think every level of college baseball well, is good yeah uh, you know you're yeah. Look at look at look at your JUCOs. I mean, there's some very very good baseball and very good baseball players. You know, so. and and think about it. There's different divisions in JUCO. Am I wrong? Yeah. There's, there's division, division one. There's division two. I think there might even be a division three. I don't think I've really seen many of those in this mm -hmm. area. But, um, but yeah. Exactly. So I mean, there's there's even there's even a uh, what is it the NCAA which is yeah, like the, the or NCCAA which is the Christian schools yep. um, you know they, they even have that I, I real quick randomly and so Justin can look this up does UMKC have a baseball team no that, he said no, no I don't think so they do not okay I knew they had a softball team so I didn't know if they had a baseball team or not uh, when you had the number and, and when you because, you know, that's the only other D1 school I think we have is UMKC in in uh, in Missouri. And I was curious if they had a baseball team or not. They have a club team, he said. I uh, gotcha. Yeah, it's a heart so. of Kansas City. <laughs> it's not a lot of space out there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, guys, with this being said, and we talk about these things, I want to I want to bring this next question because you're you're an old Slava guy. Yep. And uh, I think your heart's still a little bit there, you know, oh, feel good. There. Yeah. And are leagues a thing of the past? I think I think the the culture of a league is in the past, but I think the future of baseball is in league. You look at every high level of baseball. Tell me a high level of baseball that does not play a league. Right. You know, so why are we and it goes back to the last point about, you know, staying within two hundred miles, that's where most kids mm -hmm. go to school. Why are we traveling all this time when we can just play here in St. Louis? We've talked about how many clubs there are. Why do we need to travel? Now, maybe in the younger years when there wasn't many tournament companies out there, things like that, we can play locally and play competitive baseball. And I think a league is the best way to do that. There's no, Especially when you're talking about the rising cost of travel, gas, hotels. Play a league. That's an interesting thought. Baseball's a grind. Baseball's made to be a grind, and that's where I think league play comes in. And do you think, guys, that the league part of it and what you're saying, it's meant to be a grind, do you think it's because at these lower age levels there's not enough pitching you, we, we've done? And, again, I'm not – we love Game 7 with tournaments. I have no problem. Those are the types of things. But even Game 7, they've talked about doing leagues and stuff as well. So, I mean, that's – it's not out of the question in no. that respect. But – how does that work with pitching and things and what we do as, as a scope? There's got to be some some real thought to that, yeah. right? I mean, you got the stigma of you need to only have about 11, 12 players at a youth team. Well, what's wrong with having 13 or 14 as long as you're playing enough games to use them? You know, and that's where playing throughout the week, you can do that. Fair point. You know, because if you just go play Friday through Sunday, Thursday through Sunday, you don't need that many guys. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to go add in a Tuesday, Wednesday game as well, that's when you need those extra arms and get more guy, more reps. I think, personally, I think you can learn. Don't get me wrong. Practice is important. Mm -hmm. But you can learn just as much, in my opinion, in a game setting that you can in the practice setting. Uh, the other thing is, too, you can take your pregame warm-ups 
and turn it into a mini practice. There's ways around that, or ways to work in practice into a game scenario. Um, you know, these tournament companies, and I'm not, you know, any tournament. You go to play a tournament, you might be able to take some ground balls and fly balls on your side, your half of the field, where at least in Slava, we can still play, take a full in and out. Right. So we can get that work in before a game that, that you see at every other level of baseball. High school, High exactly. High school, college, you know. So, and, you know, a lot of college scouts used to come and look at pregame just as much as the game. And with these tournaments, they don't get to see that. I can't, that, that's, that's, I don't have anything really on that. Just, I, I, I think uh, at the younger age, for sure, uh, playing more games, like he said, is, is you need to learn more. I do believe that when you get older, you need to start developing some skills and drills that are different uh, in, in your athletes um, to, to help with that. But uh, and when you're younger, you need to play as much as you can so you can experience as much as you can and coach in the moment. Uh, you know, you, you just don't yell across the field necessarily, but when there's a situation, uh, have that conversation right away because if you wait till the end of the game, uh, kids, at, especially at a young age, you know, they, they pay attention for three seconds and they're done. Uh, so if you can get them while you have it instead of write it on a card and then after the game say hey do you remember this of course they don't remember because they've struck out since then made another error or whatever and they, they had a bad game you know they're not going to remember so if you you attack that early while they're playing i think that you can develop and so league to me is important um we're not playing league for our older groups this year um simply because we're trying to get in some more practicing uh, and I felt last year for my 15U group, that's what I needed to develop them a little bit more than playing because they needed the attention, not so much the, the you know, every so often you get a blooper and what to do in this situation. We had to mimic those. And so um, we pressed a lot of practices, but we ended up practicing three to four, four times a week plus games. And it, it helps when you are working. And that's what league does uh, for most teams is you get a chance to work, you get a chance to see a kid that might not hit in, in tournaments, might get a rep uh, during the week to keep the to keep him satisfied if he's a PO. Um, I'm, I'm all for leagues. Uh, I just I just think we need to do better as a group uh, in designing these leagues and make them competitive where they're not so lopsided um, and, and competition set. So, you know, if we have double A levels versus triple A levels, and I know that doesn't work in high school, but if we at least have a senior league and a junior league or whatever you want to call it, um, we need, to, again, going back to the adults, we have to do a better job of identifying what our team is and place them in a place to be competitive because nobody wants to get, um, you know, kicked in their teeth, um, Shall you know, I? playing games. <laughs> no, yeah, I agree. I, I understand that you still have to play the game, and, and um, but you're not learning getting beat up. So if sure. you play at a level that you can compete – um, it, it makes for more fun. I will say this, though. I do think there is one good lesson in in a good old fashioned butt whooping. Is I don't want to get. Oh, it, butt it happens anymore. even when you're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that, I mean, that you know, happens though. Guys, when you're. <laughs> do you do you? I mean, if 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 your team loses three to two, four to two, five three, something, you know, like that. You always there's learning moments in those things as as anything because a couple plays have whatnot you go out and get waxed you know run ruled you just weren't there <laughs> right you know so that's 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 a whole mental approach and and something sometimes it somebody needs to be woken up but we'll save that for another day <laughs> I do want to finish twenty two to nothing <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> 22 to nothing. You don't think we learned from that 22 to nothing? Yeah, those kids were embarrassed. And so you definitely learn. And Basta had a good team. I'll never forget this. Them kids never wanted to experience that ever again. So if you have to learn, you do learn from it. Um, it may be not 100%. the best learning tool, but. <laughs> no, you don't want to experience it often. But again, 20, like you said, getting beat. But you can get beat by a team that you get just lost to five to three. You can lose to them by 15 runs two days later. You know, and it's just what did you bring to the table that day? And so I just want to compete. I, yeah. I don't want to compare these kids. I want to compete. Um, and and I'm, I, I, love, I love the access we have to a lot of teams using this facility because we can practice – against each other during the year. 
last last thing here I want to get to, and this is something that I think is very uh, interesting. Uh, we talk about college baseball all the time. College, 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 college. I think, is it could it be a turn to focus the kids um, in these lower levels, 14 and under, just to focus on making your high school team? Well, that's what we try to do. I mean, are we perfect at it? No, I don't think anybody right. is. But, I mean, we try to take our youth athletes and prepare them for high school, and then we try to take our high school athletes and prepare them for college. Um, you know, because – and as a club director, again, I, I'm, I'm – I'm, the future of club baseball is is making me weary of what's going to happen to high school baseball. Mm. And, you know, you see a lot of other sports where clubs have kind of taken over and, and teams or players, athletes, they stay with their clubs instead of playing high school. As a club director, I do not want to see that happen. Right. High school baseball is one of the best times of my life, and I don't th- I don't want to take that away, that possibility of uh, of that enjoyment from, from a young, young athlete. I think – I think playing high school baseball and having that pride in your school and going out and competing with all your high school classmates that there's something that says there's there's something about that that you can't really take that away and I wouldn't want to take that away from an athlete as a club director and say no you should just come play with us because we can develop you better whatever we can get you to the next level no go play with your high school I I I hope I hope that that never happens where club baseball takes over where it it, it, it takes away from high school baseball. Well, we've we've had this discussion, and and I love that because I think that needs to be there. Uh, to me, I think that's that's the broader answer as well within clubs, is focusing on that. There is so many good teams, good high school teams, in in uh, the state, and when I talk to coaches around the state, uh, we were talking to John Sipes um, from Platte County, Platte County. Pirates just won the 5A or Class 5 uh, state championship. And one of the things he said, he, he really, we were talking to him at there, is the clubs around, it's the development getting better and whatnot. It's helping these high school coaches who are hamstring, hamstrung, I should say, by Misha because mm-hmm. there's only so much they can do. There's only so many dates. There's only so many contact dates. They have this. So... In, in certain respects, coaches are reliant on the clubs. That club. Mm-hmm. Agreed? I agree. Um, back when I coached against you in Slava, yeah. that group of kids that I had, I had a lot of House Central kids. And I remember having the conversation with Coach Howard over there. What can I do to prepare these guys for your high school team? You know, what positions, things like that. And I. I as a, I want to, I want to build those relationships with the high schools and and, and the coaches and our athletes and where they're going because it is it's a two way street. We're going to help you. You can help us. You know, I, you know, we just tried to expand to Mid Missouri. We'll have a couple teams down there. But one of the things I did, I reached out some of the, some of the local coaches down there at the high schools and said, "Here's what we're looking to do. How can we help you? And you can help us. You know." And that's the way. I, and I think that mutual cooperation. Every club should do that because then. The coaches, you're not saying, hey, you need to go play for this club. No, no offense. I, I'm this way. I think it should be equal opportunity. And with, uh, if you're a parent, I believe in this very much. Here's Mr. Buddha. And I guarantee you, knowing Mike, he would accept this. If you're, if you're a parent and you, got, you want your kid to go to a tryout for Premier Baseball, if you called him up and said, what's your, what's your program like? What's it about? Who are the coaches at this age? This is my son, whatnot. Talk to me a little bit about your club and do a little vetting. Would you be opposed to that? Not at all. I don't think that happens very often, does it? Mm-mm. And I think this, Not enough. Is, this to me is one of the solutions as parents, not just going to take your kid to a tryout because uh, it's got the name on it, but what is, what's the best fit for your son? What's the best fit do the understanding of values align and whatnot and not to mean that everybody's like oh they're they're a bunch of nut jobs no that's not what i mean there's always differences in how people approach training and things of that nature agreed guys i agree and i can say within our yeah. organization every coach is a little different find the coach that you that you want that the find a place that you know your coach your coach's philosophies align with what your play what your athlete's philosophy should be and 
or what you think they should be, and I think that's the best way to go about it. You, would you think that would uh, decrease the transfer portal? I, I think so. <laughs> I, 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 th- I mean, one of the first questions I think, I mean, my kids are still pretty young. Um, sure. So I haven't gotten into it yet. But, you know, who's the coach? I want to know about the coach. I could care less about the club and everything else. I want to know about my, who's going to coach my kid. What's their philosophies? Um, you know, what's their background? What kind of person are they? Or what kind of character do they have? Because ultimately, I think, and we say it as, as guys that are that coach or, you know, anybody that coaches, you don't understand how much of an impact we can really have on people. And it's not just about the game. It's about life. Yeah. And I would like to know what my coaches, who, who my kid would play for, who that coach is more than the club. Influences that I've had throughout uh, my playing career, um, those coaches still to this day, uh, I can see somewhere and I, I want to give them a hug and thank them for the guidance that they gave me. So he is absolutely correct in saying um, in, in, in saying what he's saying here with like, what is our what is our real job? And we are selling a service. I mean, at the end of the day, to play for this club, we are selling a service to you. We are going to put you in positions to be successful as a player. Uh, but what does it take and, and what is that coach about? If you have a coach that's out there wanting to argue every single call and, and, and make a presence that really has no impact on a game, is that a guy that is going to teach your kid what it's like to be a college athlete or a high school athlete um, or a competitor? Um, you know, all they're going to do is complain. So don't just go to that coach that's screaming and hollering, that thinks he knows everything that's in the rule book, because I guarantee that all of us who have, have been in this game for a long time probably still have a rule that pops up that you you, you skipped over because it happens a one in a million time you know shot but um you come across some things in this sport that that are um uh, life changing and baseball has such adversity um that i i really believe that it helps prepare for life. I mean, I'm, I'm in here with this facility and things happen. And, uh, I had something, you know, uh, that I couldn't fix the other day and I was frustrated. And the first thing I thought about was the time I struck out with the bases loaded with one out down a run, uh, on three straight sliders that had no business even being in the strike zone. I was just so amped up and mm-hmm. I had to learn from those kinds of mistakes. And that adversity has helped me just take that deep breath and say, Hey, there's still another chance recover. That's what baseball is great about. That's what we have to do as coaches. And I, I think Mike is hundred percent accurate in saying that we will influence kids well beyond what we can even imagine. Um, I, I have kids that graduated college my first year there at wash U, and they will invite me to weddings and uh you know we get invited to those things and it's a very special feeling to know that you have impacted uh someone you're not going to impact everybody you know not everybody's going to like you um and and you have to keep this business related um uh, professional and and just do do what you do you know and um influence man i i uh i really appreciate what mike said there just because the coaches i had in my career yeah i mean i still contact i mean i'm pretty much every coach that i've played for from little league to up i still have some kind of contact with and i and i love that i love when i see a former player come up to me having whether they were a good player bad player whatever didn't play college baseball another come up and tell me what they're doing nowadays you know uh, I've been lucky enough to have some of my former uh, a, a good few a uh, good amount of kids come back and coach for me, and I love seeing it. I yeah. love it. And then I got a I got a guy that uh, his daughter's the same age as mine, and now his daughter's on my soccer team to uh, my daughter's soccer team together. And I just love seeing former players and what they're up to nowadays. That's the best part of it. It is fun. Isn't Still it? getting called coach. Hey, I love it. <laughs> I do. I got a guy. Yeah, I, I see on. Slow pitch softball, and he comes every time. Hey, coach! And I'm like, oh, I love that. That is, <laughs> it's a good feeling. Oh, isn't it's it? a great feeling. It is. It's a good feeling, and and that shows you that they respected you as a person and as a coach, and what you, the the values that you held, and uh, worked to instill yep. in what you did. I love that stuff, guys. Great stuff. Yeah, I'll give you the old fist bumper there. There it is. 
Dang, that's, that's a, a big, big that's a big one. Jay. <laughs> uh, Mike Buddha, Premier Baseball Academy. Thanks for coming in, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. We'll get you back in. That was right. good stuff. As always, Mitch Thomas, everybody, if you liked what we talked about here, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, we are, we're looking to bring more good conversations. That's what we want to do is we want to present conversations, bring people in that are in the industry, talk about these things. That's what Youth Baseball Midwest is about. We want to have the conversation, not only have the conversation, but present some resolutions and some solutions to how we can improve the sport of baseball in youth or baseball in youth sports. There it is. There it is. I got it. Comment below. Leave your comments. If you what you heard, please comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Everybody, have a great day in the Lord. All you pitchers. Keep throwing strikes, right? Strikes. Strikes. Can't we throw got, enough strikes. We got the pitcher right over here, and we got the hitter over there. And the hitters? Hit them where they ain't. There you <laughs> go. It's good stuff. I love that. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>